welcome back to Kay's Combos. Before we get into what we need to get to per usual, I need you guys to like, subscribe, comment, and share. And as you guys can tell from the title, we'll be talking about flaws in our childhood as far as ways of thinking and rules as we grew up. Um, before we get into that though, first I want to read the responses that I got from asking this question um, via our Instagram page. So if you don't follow us on Instagram, go ahead and pause this video, maybe do it after the video, but make sure you're following us so you can engage in all convos related to case convos. Okay, so let's get into these responses. I'm reading off my laptop, so y'all just bear with me. So first, I'm going to start off with this tweet that I saw that I thought was like really important to start off the whole conversation before we get into the responses. The tweet says, you literally have to reverse everything you were taught growing up and analyze it completely for yourself. And I thought that was like nothing but facts. I feel like once we get to a certain age, we start, we stop seeing our parents as like these perfect beings and start really seeing them actually for who they are, which is human. You know, they make mistakes. They are growing themselves. So I just thought that tweet was like really important. Now let's get into the responses, I promise. So the first response I'm going to read is, believing that older people automatically deserve respect just because they are older. By the way, again, just to reiterate, the, I asked the question, what were some flaws or some rules that as you, grew, as you got older, you realized were flawed or you just didn't agree with? Next one is not being able to fully express yourself. Growing up, people, people that weren't my family slash friends would tell me that I was too grown or too fast just because the way I was shaped, which is crazy. Not apologizing to children. Not providing explanations to children. Parents not apologizing to children when they are wrong. Hitting children to correct, quote unquote, correct their behavior equal post-traumatic slave syndrome. That anything outside of heterosexuality was sinful, wrong, or unnatural. Virginity, virginity increases your value as a wife. Children should be seen and not heard. Y'all, that's the trigger. I hate that. Like, that is that is something that I hope that I never apply to my future children if I choose to have them. Like, no. Having decisions being made for me made me indecisive. I agree with that. Um, this one is a little lengthy. It says, I know, well, they said they know their comment would exceed. But by the way, guys, I don't care if your comments exceed. I want to hear your responses, everything that you have to say about a topic, because that's what we're here for. Um, but to start off, it's, she says, or he says, to not talk back. And in my household, it was and still is in all aspects. At, but as I grew up, I realized how important it was to speak up also. Yes, I'm respectful and I make sure what I'm saying is aligned with how I should speak to adults. But if something isn't right, I'm going to comment and hold the elder accountable as well. Even if it's just a slick comment and it's incorrect. I choose my battles though, but sometimes I have to let elders and even my mom know like, hey, I'm not going to let this slide because it was disrespectful or it hurt my feelings. Growing up, I couldn't do that. But now my mom is seeing that, yeah, okay, I'm listening. Because ultimately, she's teaching me to let others talk to me any kind of way. But now she's learning and is proud that I don't let people do that. And I'll just end it off that last one. Because I got so many responses, um, it was hard to pick and choose which one I wanted to speak on in the video. Um, but those were just a few of the responses that I got. But with those responses, I think it was so good that one, our generation is recognizing and you know reflecting on the ways that we grew up and you know there's certain rules and some certain ways of thinking that we were taught and we're able to challenge those things now we're able to question it we're able to analyze it and really interpret it like i said from that tweet and you know make it your own see if that really works for you is that something that you really agree with and is that something that we're going to teach to our children if we choose to have them so in all, those responses really reflect certain things that in those people's lives were, as they got older, they were like, nah, this not it. This is not something that I want to pass down to my children because I realized that it did not work for me. You know what I'm saying? So what might work for your parents as they grew up, you know, as they grew up and were raised by your grandparents may not work for you and may not work for your future children. But it's always good to make sure we not only reflect for personal reasons, but just reflect for, you know, 
for generational gains, breaking generational curses. So anything under the sun like that, just truly reflecting and making sure you don't repeat the same mistakes, I think is amazing. Another thing is after reading all those responses as well, it was clear to me that well, I just reckon I recognize several things, but the main thing I recognize is that we always want to be better. Um, I think we're my generation, we're always improving. Um, we're always trying to learn, we're always trying to make sure we're inclusive, with however that may look. And I also realized that when it comes to gener looking at each generation individually, just looking at a parent's generation or a grandparent's generation, they were trying to give their kids more so opportunities um, to go to college, to, you know, get into integrated schools and things of that such, you know. And for maybe for our parents, it was materialistic things, whether it was clothes, having a bigger house, having a name brand. And now with our generation, I think is really setting in to put our focus and to pass down to our children good mental health. Um, with Generation Z and maybe millennials, just a little, you know, to mush those generations together. I think it's really important for us to give our children, you know, mental health. You know, just focusing on that more so than materialistic things. Not to say that we aren't out here hustling, trying to give our children, you know, the big houses, the nice cars, the name brands, and anything like that. But I just really think that when it comes to gener our generation specifically, we're trying so hard to break generational curses, especially the generational curses that affect us mentally. And because they affect us mentally, it's going to affect our children. And so we're making sure that we not only fix it within ourselves, but make sure that our practicings and our teachings and our even the way we choose to discipline our children is different. It's healthy. It's not something that we wouldn't want to experience or that we or things that we didn't get from our childhood. And not just the mental things too, but also health. You know, we talk about health, but, and we get specific with mental health, but really things like just general health, like the things that we will feed our kids. We want our kids to be pescatarian, vegan, um, just chicken, you know, like if you want to, you want to get real specific, you know, just more health than wealth. I think that our generation is really focusing on not only for our future children, but for ourselves. A lot of my friends are, you know, getting into the vegan lifestyle, the vegetarian lifestyle, the pescatarian lifestyle. You know, that's something that I was introduced to once I got to college, you know, that, you know, m more so what pescatarian was, because I didn't know what that was till I got to college and had friends who were already into that lifestyle. Maybe because of religious reasons or you know what or just personal choices but with our generation like I said I think it's more health than wealth even though we're trying to accumulate wealth as well to break other generational curses um, but mental health is something that I think our generation is very stagnant in and really trying to make sure we break those barriers break that silence break all those things that come with not having healthy coping mechanisms coming with mental health and just dealing with it in general. I know when we talk about these things, it's a little uneasy for some people because like I said previous, it's so hard to see our parents as unperfect people, right? It's it's different once we, it's like, I don't know what age it is because it's different for everyone, but there's a certain age that we get to where we start understanding that our parents make mistakes. They are people, they are human, you know? they go through the things that we we go through or are currently going through or went through and it's okay to challenge their ways of thinking it's okay to question it it's okay to ask them questions you know it's rigid i think our generation is trying to make that more acceptable trying and i think it really seems for so long we just always thought our parents were right like they were always right well i know for me i always thought my parents were right about everything they knew the best they and they still know the best it's not to say that my parents or anyone's parents you know the ways that they grew up were like completely wrong but you know there are just certain things that we like mm, i wouldn't do it like that or i just wouldn't do that at all because you're your own person and you know and then sometimes there are people that think that you know well i turned out okay you know you know just like you take for example people who say they got whoopings when they growing when they grew up you know they're like well i'm okay you know i'm not abusive i'm not this i'm not that 
And you know, that's where when you become complicit with those things and you don't question it and you don't try to just take it for your own interpretation or think about that it might not that might not work for your future children, it might not work for your partner, it might work, work it might not work for your friend or whoever, but that's kind of how generational curses start, right? Just being complicit with things and not being to, you know, just think outside of the box, find alternatives, but just because you turned out fine, then you're just gonna keep repeating the same things. And by keeping repeating those same things, even if they are so-called habits that you think are good, you're still secretly and sometimes in foundation creating generational curses that you thought yourself you were going to break or trying to break and maybe you weren't you didn't see any generational curses but that's the whole that's the whole thing sometimes generation curses are something that we don't see because we've become complicit we think that our parents are right they we turned out okay so what's the problem and it's not always a problem it's just that sometimes there are better ways of going about things and another thing with parenting i think a lot of times um people don't see their children as people, you know, because they're so young and we feel like we need to guide these little people, we need to help these little people, we need to stir them into the right path. Um, with doing that for so long, there's some type of possession that comes with it. Like, this is mine. Like, you have to do what I say. Um, even if it is to protect and to keep that person safe, there's some type of controllingness and some type of possessiveness that goals possessiveness. I don't even know that's if that's a word, y'all. But you know, just being possessive with that person and some type of ownership that comes with that. Um, not and it turns into a dictatorship, not respecting what that person says because they're not young enough to know better or they don't understand. But one thing that we do know about children, we know about people, is that they know what they feel. So, you know, trying to take into, that, taking that into consideration, you know, having respect for children, having respect for people. Sometimes it becomes some type of ownership, some type of dictatorship that you need to possess this person, that they have to do what you say all the time, instead of, you know, making it some type, you know, a, a partnership. You get what I'm saying? I hope, I hope that makes sense, and I'm not trying to step on no parents' toes, but just really making sure that your child is heard because from the responses you know that was one of the things making sure you're heard and if you're always trying to control that child and make them do what you say without them being able to ask you questions like well why do i have to do this da, 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 then they don't feel heard they feel like maybe well they suppress their feelings they don't feel like what they're feeling is valid and that's where all those mental you know problems start to kick in where they start questioning themselves questioning their feelings or maybe i'm doing too much it's just little things like that that people don't think matter matter so much it plays such a small role and it builds up into an adult who then questions their decisions they're indecisive they don't think for themselves they're codependent or dependent on people they need validation from others because they didn't feel that or they weren't told or they didn't get that recognition or that acknowledgement that what they feel is okay is valid and having someone explain what they felt and trying to come up with some type of solution where the child is heard but the parent also feels like they're doing a great job as a parent making sure the child is safe because that's what all parents want so with that i want to play a short clip from jada pickett the lovely jada pickett um the table talk she did with her husband, Will Smith, and he said something that was so enlightening to me. Well, for one, I'm biased because I love Will Smith. But he said something in regards to parent um, parenthood that I think you guys would, I think y'all would like to hear. I think it was really insightful. About y'all feelings. Right. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. but, you know, I, I, I knew, I knew to, to back up, the kids aren't ours. They are not. They're not ours. They are their own people. And I just completely let go of my needs and my desires for their lives. And I started shifting into what I call the gardener flower concept of fathering. Yeah. The seed already is what God designed it to be. Right. The gardener is not trying to make the seed become what the gardener wants. Right. The gardener wants to create an environment where the seed can become what it wants to be. be. Absolutely. 
where I'm going to provide nourishment and I'm going to provide support, but I am not going to preconceive what you need to be. There is a real arrogance in that. Real talk. And it's like letting go of my picture of what I wanted them to be. Yeah. And allowing them to lead. For me, that's really all you can do for your kids. Absolutely. That's all you can do. They're going to have to figure it out for themselves. When but they're there's in the inevitable pits when of life. Yeah, you know, and just to have something that they can come back to where they know it's not impossible. So, yeah, as you can see, that kind of basically explained probably more, probably better than I did of uh, what I said previously. Um, so just really, I think for the future, if I become a mother, um, just making sure that the things that I felt or the things that my friends expressed to, express to me, my mom expressed to me, whoever that they felt like they didn't get or they want to enforce in their child, their grandchildren, whoever, their friends, their partners, you know, just making sure you're always reflecting. I think self-reflection is like the best way to make sure that you aren't repeating bad habits, you know, piling on to the general generational curses that might come with it that you already been established to that are established in your families just making sure that you break those barriers break those generational curses and create a foundation that's new that's healthy that has everything that you were looking for maybe when you were growing up um depending on your situation so to end all case combos and, and end off our whole discussion today i just really want you guys to know i guess to leave you off with some affirmations i want you guys to know that you can break your generational curses you can break any barrier that might be blocking you now blocked you in the past and you overcame it or maybe it's back again you can break those generational curses for yourself for your future family so you don't impose that on your future partners you you can do it. Um, I also got, want you guys to know that your feelings are valid. Um, whatever you didn't get as a child, you can still give that to yourself. You can give it to your future children. Just really, like I said before, making sure you self-reflect, not only for your future children that you may or may not have, but just for yourself, you know, for your future partners that you might get involved with. It's always good to self-reflect. It's always good to challenge or question things that don't make sense. Even if, even now at our big age, and there's some questions that you still have from your parents that you never got, go to those people, get that closure, get those questions answered, because you deserve that, you know? And you owe it to yourself. If you don't think you owe it to yourself, you owe it to your future children, you owe it to your future partners, or whoever it may be. And like I said, you can bring break any generational curses, any barriers, any personal barriers that you have. You can do it, you can break it. And if you don't believe in you, if nobody else will you feel like nobody's believing you, Case Convos believes in you. I believe in you. You can do it. So you guys be safe have a great month if i don't push out another video i'm transitioning into school back into school so fingers crossed make sure you guys like comment subscribe share tell a friend tell a friend make sure you follow us on instagram at k's convos and follow our podcast as well at K's Combos underscore on Instagram as well. And yeah, you guys stay safe.